I've always had a deep fascination with all sorts of real and imaginary creatures and have collected books of all types on the topics of natural history and science. The idea to create a fully fictitious encyclopedia came to me when I realized that I could entertain my desire for the fantastic while maintaining my interest in the pursuit of objective truths. Starting in 1995, I fully devoted myself to the ambition of the project and began completing the individual plates of the encyclopedia, which currently includes over 60 copper plate etchings, 75 gouache and watercolor paintings, and a good-sized collection of found object constructions. I see my project as a postmodern extension of, for example, Charles Wilson Peale's museum and the vast European collections representing exotic plant and animal discoveries from explorations of the New World. My work is predominantly focused on the relationship between humans and nature, and in doing that, it describes and alludes to the fruits and byproducts of that interaction. Though my creatures are fantastic, and perhaps not from the world as we presently understand it, they do reference original sources, which are then altered, combined, mutated, and recontextualized. Further, all of the prints and watercolors are meticulously drawn in my own hand. I do this to heighten the believability of the strange flora, fauna, and phenomenon. Because I am obviously making works that are part of a fictitious book, I like the reference to the destructive practice of slicing pages from old encyclopedias and manuscripts, and how the resultant new object is rendered mute and yet magical without its accompanying explanation. Along with my interest in natural history collections and cabinets of curiosities, I find great inspiration in the works of artist naturalists or naturalist artists such as Albrecht Dürer, Maria Sillaban Marion, and John James Audubon. By and large, these artists were genuinely attempting to document the previously undocumented. I think it's hard for us to fully appreciate the pre-photographic world. New creatures and discoveries were drawn or painted, sometimes from only a verbal or written description or a brief encounter. The physical, visual result of artist error and exaggeration prevailed in published form until new information came to light that proved the falsity of the first illustration. For me, the great wonder contained in the study of the history of natural history is that all those bizarre creatures, the sea serpents and five-headed dragons, and bushes that sprout full-grown lambs, still exist because an artist drew them, thus making the unknown known, or the unbelievable real. The inclusion of actual objects in old display cabinets, like the curio cabinets, further enhances the possibility that images from the encyclopedia might well exist. In several circumstances, I have made an object to validate a print or a watercolor. I also include old books that reproduce particularly weird scientific experiments or photographs of mutated animals as proof of the nature of oddity. It's important to mention that I do not harm any animals for the project. I find all of the parts on the ground, dead, or in antique stores. Some found objects are presented as hybrids, and some are presented in their as-found state, offering comparative anatomy studies ranging from, for example, an overstuffed toad found at a tourist gift shop and a dried-out specimen of a frog found near a local pond to collages of real insects married to organic and cultural materials. In one instance, I made a little harness for a very large beetle skeleton, which was then attached to a toy cable car. Next to my three-dimensional recreation of an actual experiment, I placed the book that shows several examples of insects being tested for endurance and strength by tying tiny little weights to them or making them pull objects like toy cars. In another instance, I had found a large beetle on a walk, and upon returning home, it was accidentally dropped and its head broke off. It may sound a little Frankensteinian to borrow a term that the contemporary curator Stuart Horodner used as the title of a recent group show in which my work was included, but after much consideration, I glued an antique stopper on the spot where the beetle's head used to be, and now the creature is known as the stopperhead beetle, extremely rare. It's like Jack and the Beanstalk. Nature is wildly mysterious and potentially dangerous when combined with the desires, practices, and culture of human beings. Ultimately, 
the alternate encyclopedia illuminates and comments on the very human need to make meaning of our world. In trying to understand our world, and therefore ourselves, we have attempted some pretty strange things when taken in, or especially out of context, and have inflicted our will over creatures much smaller and less dominant than ourselves. I'll confess that I've never been very mechanically inclined, so I haven't literally taken things apart to figure out what makes them tick. And maybe that's part of my critique, that the progress of science can be seen as a history of taking things apart and not putting them back together again in exactly the same way.